because somebody asked me to do stand up for a fundraiser. And I thought, okay, I'll write material. This is before laptops, so I had to write it like by hand. And, uh, oh no, not that. I went, I went to, uh, remember Cole? What was the, no, it was called a, well, you, I'm sure you've been to San Francisco. Anyway, it was this yeah, yeah. comedy club that also did improv, so they let me go on because yeah. they knew me from improv stuff. And I remember backstage, I was with Rob, and just as I walked out, he said, don't do anything your friends might laugh at, which was everything that I had. What? 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 That is fucked up. So then I walked on stage, and I have nothing. I have nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I started the thing, and then somebody in the audience started talking to me, and I said something back to them, and the whole room just laughed. Yeah. And then I just sort of... I have no memory of anything I did, and but the room was laughing and it was all good. And I walk, I barely could walk off because there were steps. I remember my legs were like jello yeah. going down the steps, and I thought, I'm never doing this again. This is terrifying. But it's wrong as I walk on stage. Don't do anything your friends think oh, is funny. Well, you know what? Comics have a way of the, the, <laughs> that was on purpose. She, he was Fargo. worried about. He was worried about My following you. But here's right. here's Gil uh, Soto. Amy, what are some of your favorite movies and shows? Well, here's the thing. Because I think I have a, I like to observe, I love documentaries <sighs> and reality TV. The first season or the first beginnings of reality TV, when they aren't aware of the camera following them, yeah. where their true nature comes out. I like one, because I'm generally, I think I like, I'm a voyeur. Yeah. And I like to see how people are. Yeah. And you then, know, yeah. <laughs> Sam Kennison, you know, may he rest in peace, had a great yes. line. He goes, you know, I love documentaries, you know, because you're out there and you see those starving people and what they're living <laughs> and what they got to go through to get water. And you're thinking in the back of your mind, you know, the crew could sh throw them something from craft service. <laughs> you know, that's the one. He's a good man. Oh, yeah, he was he, a good man. Well, he, he was, I was, that, he was part of my class when I was in, uh, right. you know, when I say class. Well, I meant, Andy, I was such a, I am still a huge fan of yours. Oh, thank you. You were just, you know, you were game changing because, you know, yeah. You were doing things that nobody else was doing, and you were unabashed. <laughs> it reminds you were me. Honest. Oh, you know, you were, uh, you know, all that. Yeah. How, uh, you were just you know, it, it reminds me of um, uh, Fred Hemmings. You know, he's he was uh, he's a, uh, he be, went on to be a senator here in Hawaii, but he was Hawaii's uh, the world's first um, a surf champ. He was the oh, world, wow. world surf champ back when, you know, it was basically amateurs. And I said, wow, what did you get for that? And he goes, I got a bar of wax and a T-shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when anyone ever says, you were groundbreaking, and I'm, I'm happy to have been that guy. Right, right. But still, I got a bar of wax and a, and a T-shirt, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's right. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't necessarily pay off. But, you know, you don't need to have a lot of stuff. No, you don't. <laughs> You don't. As long you know. as I can pay my bills, yeah. take care of my kids, have a roof over my head. Right. You know, I've just been lucky. And and that's part of the that's part of the what I call the upside of this whole Rona thing. You know, it it helps you appreciate what you do have. You know. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. When you realize right. the the world doesn't end if you can't get a Starbucks cup of coffee or whatever. You know. No. And I try to teach that to my daughter too, and I think she's you know, really starting to get it more. <laughs> didn't you, didn't you work? Still, didn't pardon? you, I was going to say, didn't you work with your daughter um, in, in some shows or something? We did um, several solo shows. Well, we did several, I did theater and she would be in some of the plays. Oh, okay. Um, and then she was in one of my solo shows where she was a nonverbal participant. Okay. And then, uh, and then, most recently, we did a show because she's adopted and she had questions about her adoption. So I thought that might be a good way for her to explore her feelings about it. So she actually, at the age of 11, wrote her own material um, 
and then performed what I would be normally doing, you know, different characters. She did all the characters. It was really quite remarkable. She's pretty good, but I don't know if she has the passion for acting. So she's actually studying at UH um, to be a social worker. Oh, that's nice. To help. She wants to help people, oh. which is lovely. Was it weird, uh, not weird, but was it difficult um, when you're working with your daughter to go home and say, okay, now we're mother-daughter again and we're not going to talk about it? Well, the first show we did together, she was nine, and we were at the Getty Villa yeah. doing uh, Greek comedy. And so she was, uh, she was, so she was really wonderful in rehearsal and, uh, but she would be, she was nine. And so, you know, when we would break for dinner or something and they'd have food there, and I'd say, what do you want? And she'd say, I'm getting it myself. She was like wanting to pretend that she was, you know, an independent, like adult, like the rest of us. Oh, She's very serious. Yeah. Uh, and then when we were doing, uh, run throughs at the end off book, she would be on book at nine. So when people said line, she'd have to read the line really loud to the actors. I was so impressed with her. <laughs> then, at, as we started going into previews, she would like come and talk to me and stuff because she didn't come on until later in the show. And I said, "Look at Penelope. When the show, when we start the show, I am not your mother anymore. <laughs> you cannot talk to me. I need to have time to focus." Oh. And she'd be like, "What? You know, because she's young." But uh, that's cute, you know. This, so one you of said, the stage managers <coughs> took care of her, made sure she was occupied before the show started. Oh. So she, you but said, literally, I was like, "You are not my. I'm not your mother. You are not my child. Uh, Do not talk to me." <laughs> she goes, "Oh, so if you're not my mother, let me show you my new tattoo." <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> hey. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, so mean. Oh, that's so great. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna let you go. We're way past what I said I would. Oh keep my going. God. Yeah, but this no. is so much fun. Oh, it, 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 we could go. You know what? We can do it again once you guys get uh, back to shooting and stuff, right. and then you can, you'll have some. You know, you can give us the insight on what that's like. But uh, oh. Amy, thank you so much for being here thank on the you, David Andy. Pigeon this is Live. Great. Oh, so you'll you'll take go away. I don't have to touch anything or wait, do anything. No, well, let me see. You know, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but you know what? Again, on behalf of the Hammer Jang Gang and everyone here on the Daily Pigeon Live, mahalo, Amy. Mahalo back. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Wow. There we go. Bip. Boom. Bam. Oh, that went pretty good, don't you think, gang? Oh my goodness, she's such a nice person, and you know, uh, we'll we'll have her back, guaranteed. Bring the music back up here a little. Oh wow, thanks, Amy. You're great. Thanks, Amy. Big mahalo, Amy. She'll be watching this in uh, in the rerun, so I'm so I'll she'll definitely see these. I want I'm, I want everybody to um, get a chance to thank her for that. Oh my God, mahalo Amy, you're awesome. Mahalo Amy, so happy you could be here. Yeah, isn't that nice? And we, again, definitely will have her back. We could, we could have, you know, just gone on and on. Yeah, thank you, Gil. It was awesome, wasn't it? Oh, so awesome, look all the awesomes, awesome. Oh, that was a fun interview. She's such a nice person. You know, when we were on, uh, and I, when I met her the first time, I, I was doing that uh, show, of, you know, in the car, and I interviewed her in L.A. You know, I set up a car there, and we were driving through, and, uh, oh, she had me laughing in the car. I was like, just, hold on, hold on, I got to drive. So, anyway, so you know what, guys? <clears throat> Let's take a little break right here. <clears throat> I have a, uh, I have a little video. Um, this is the, it's kind of a best of the holo holo because you know people have been missing that, and there's a little uh, reggae music uh, underneath it. So I'll ride the um, volume and make sure you know it doesn't blow anybody away. Hold on, where is it? Oh no. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, this is about five minutes long. I'm going to put a sign that says intermission for the other platforms that know we don't do the four turtles. Um, so this is a combination of four turtles and holo holo. Here we go.
From the number one station, this is a story about love, a love story.